Hey guys, it's Kelsey Cook, and I'm here just outside of Cooley City at the Isaac Brothers Farm. I spoke with Brad Isaac, and he was kind enough to show us around. Clearly, there's a lot going on. I've never seen so many sunflowers <laughs> in my life. There's a lot of sunflowers in a 125-acre field. Yeah, so tell me about your farm. How many generations uh, has it been in your family? Really, we've been in the family for what what is now four generations. Oh, my wow. great-grandfather started the farm kind of left, went to the Bellingham shipyards and gave it to my grandfather. Okay. And my grandfather did it until he was somewhere in the neighborhood of 45, 50, decided he wanted to hunt and fish and gave it to my dad and my uncle when they were about 20, 25, coming home from um, college. All and right. now it's my brother and I farming. What are the main crops here that you grow? Wheat is the main crop in our area. So all our dry land is wheat. With our irrigation, we're able to grow a few different crops. We grow sunflowers, we grow canola, potatoes are growing on our ground. We grow a couple thousand acres of Timothy hay and alfalfa hay. With technology changing so rapidly, I was curious how it has impacted the industry and the environment. In my life, Probably the biggest change that way is some of the actual, what I'd call technology rather than the mechanization. Our tractors drive themselves, they draw perfectly straight lines, they're actually driven by GPS. So you get in, you start them, you turn them on, you draw a line that's 50 foot long, and it'll draw that line over and over and over again all day long, and all you have to do is turn on the corners. None of us as growers, none of us as people want to be wasteful with our resources, everything else. You go back 40 years ago, you had to apply a certain amount of fertilizer across your whole field. We're getting right now to periods of time where we can actually specialize, put fertilizer on for what that individual crop and plant needs. These are new technologies in the last few years, but this is what's called a flex header. And rather than being rigid, you can see all those separate yellow plates, that thing actually flexes. So as it feels the ground, it'll actually ride on the ground and go over and under bumps that come along. This truck will actually go to our elevators, get stored, and then, you know, when we ship it, it'll go anywhere from probably the Pacific Rim. 85% chance that this, this will go to the Pacific Rim. This is soft white wheat. It's a majority of what we grow in Washington State, made into cookies, cakes, flat breads, that type of stuff. This is Isaac Brothers Grain Facility. It's about a million bushel grain facility. We have eight bins that average in that 120,000 um, bushel storage capacity. 60 pounds worth of wheat is a traditional bushel. These are all cone bottom bins. The wheat drops in the pit, goes up what we call a leg. Some buckets that just constantly rotate on a belt. It gets dumped. They then have a cone bottom on the bottom of them. There's about a 30 foot underneath the ground. The auger sticks in the bottom of that. All the grain is supposed to flow out all but maybe the last 2,000 you have to shovel and then it gets augered out in these deals. So what makes Washington State such a great place to farm so many different crops? We have really good water. Our water is really stable in an area or in a state that has differing levels of, of water stability. Ours is really stable and we have the ability to have a lot of water. I was curious to find out where he sees the future of agriculture heading. My dad has always said, um, growing up in our house, if you're not growing, you're going backwards because the world's growing. People outside the ag community um, use words like sustainability and everything else, and sustainability is the word we have to have. This field has to be producing, not for my lifetime, but this field has to be producing for my children's lifetime yeah. and their children's after that. So what are the biggest challenges as a farmer? The biggest challenge in growing the crop is weather. The biggest challenge we probably face is regulation. Okay. Public perception, regulation, um, dealing with all the things that you have to do as a business, as a small business owner, which is what we really are. But then the added fact that we're touching people's food. Right. You know, we're, 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 right. in the pro we're in the process of somebody eating. Yeah. Um, and so you have a lot of added regulations that way. After a long day in the fields, there's nothing better than a nice home-cooked meal. And who better to share it with than friends and family? A lot of times it's tough. You do a job all day long and you don't see something move. You don't, you, you know, you maybe were very successful, you maybe made a lot of money, you maybe did very good at what you do, but you don't actually see the change. Yeah. We see our change on a daily basis. And, and that's one thing that I really enjoy. Second thing is the lifestyle, the farm lifestyle. My kid comes with me to work, and we still have a world where the kids are able to be involved at a young age. Yeah. Right so we really enjoy that. To hear more from the Isaac family, visit our website at wagrown.com.